to take a look at the updates we've made to this graph. It's just a series of four nodes here. We have our file name, the number of samples, and the color from the read image node. And we're plugging in that into override color in view. We may want to look at sampling an image to control other parameters in Revit or Dynamo. We're going to go over that briefly by analyzing some of the values here in the color output. If I open up our library, I'm going to type in color. We can see here in our color we can sample the brightness, hue, saturation. We can also query the alpha, blue, green, and red. Now since this is a grayscale image, I'm going to pan over here and let's sample the brightness. I'll drop that onto the canvas and I'll plug our read image into the input and hit run. So now we have an array of a series of numbers from 0 to 1. These numbers correspond to the brightness. A value of 0 is black and a value of 1 is white. And we have everything in between with this gradient. So now what we want to do is map these brightness values to the extrusion depth, which is right now set to 2. And since this is scaled from 0 to 1, let's just see what happens if we drop these brightness values directly into our depth. I'm going to clear the search bar and search for set parameter. Dropping that onto the canvas. And I'll move that to the right. And let's clear our search bar and pull up a string node. Now we can see with our highlighted element that the name of the parameter we want to change is extrusion. So I'm going to do that here instead of using a drop down menu. That will be our parameter name. You can see in the same way we've overridden the elements in our view, we're going to override these adaptive components. So I'll minimize this output, scroll over here, let's drag the adaptive components to the right. And I'll plug these adaptive components into our element input of the set parameter. Now just for kicks, let's plug the brightness directly into the value. Now we should have a series of panels with extrusion depths between 0 and 1. I'll hit run and see what happens. So the difference is quite subtle here, but we should have flat panels if they are black. And over here we can see them slowly change their thickness as they become brighter. Now we want to exaggerate this formally just to see the results and mapping our color to our actual thickness values. So in order to do this, we have our color brightness and it's mapped from 0 to 1. We could easily do a mathematical operator like multiply to increase these values. However, a really nice tool is called the remap range. If I type in remap, I'm going to choose Math, Actions, Remap, Range. I'm dropping that onto the canvas. This allows us to remap domains much more quickly without having to do all of the math in between. So it's asking us for our numbers. I'll plug our brightness values into here. And what this is going to do is take the minimum and the maximum of this list and remap it to our new minimum and our new maximum. So let's pull up a slider. Drop an integer slider on the canvas. And let's leave our new min at 0. And let's see, I'm going to move the slider up a bit and copy and paste it. And just so we can see the results, let's make this new max 20. So these are going to be pretty, pretty thick panels as they become brighter. And we're going to plug this new result into our value for set parameter. Let's hit run. So now you can see we have a very exaggerated uh, panel thickness here. And you can see this is driven directly by the color. So I'm going to move this palette over so we can see it a little better. Now, if we want the black panels to become thicker, it's as simple as switching our min and max. If I plug 20 into the new min and 0 into the new max, that's going to reverse the domain. So let me hit run and see that result. So you can see we've now reversed 
the domain and we have our black panels as the thicker values until our white panels become flat. Now just to see the results of a different image, we have magritte.jpg in the same folder. This is our this is not a pipe image. If I scroll back to our image sample and change the file name to Magritte and hit run, this should update our adaptive components on the roof by changing their color as well as their thicknesses. So I'm going to zoom out in Dynamo. Here's our total graph. And you can see plugging in a different image, we of course have an abstraction of that original painting, but we have the same rule set up. The darker colors become thicker panels, and those colors are also overridden in a view. So this is a very basic example of overriding colors in your view and also uh, using image samples to affect a different parameter within Revit. In the following tutorials, we're going to look at actual analysis of these panels. Uh, you can notice that we have not yet used our polygons and our surfaces, but we can get into analyzing surface areas and plane deviations uh, and having that drive either a different parameter or the color visible in our view. So stay tuned for more.